So this is the part of our uh, after teaching lab, which is sort of very didactic, and we let you work on your own pace. And work, if you have any questions, as you sort of go through these, we've got easy things to do, and then some medium things and some difficult things. So depending on where you're at and how quickly you move through that, hopefully we'll at some point stump you with our questions so that you can't get too far ahead. Um, but so start going in and, and start looking at the uh, at that course that we've got set up and see what it's like for the students. See what it feels like. You know, imagine yourself as one of the 20 students in a class or 200 students in a class answering some of these questions and seeing what it looks like. Use your laptop, try it on your phone, try it, you know, they have a top app, app probably for Android and iPhone and yeah. I don't know if they have one for Windows or not, Windows app, uh, Windows mobile, but um, they're trying very hard to, to, to reach people where they are and see what happens. For example, one of the things that I figured out was on my mobile phone, in the mobile web browser, I had a hard time doing the sort of this and put these in the right order type things because yeah. it, didn't, it scrolls instead of mm -hmm. dragging them around. So these are the kinds of things that as an instructor we might not think about, but as a student, you know, if we base the whole class on that, and then we were, the students are like, oh, I can't, professor, I can't do this because it's not working. That interrupts the class. So it, it is important to have a familiarity with the tool, any tool, yeah. before you start to, to use it. As you and part of teaching dangerously is being able to roll with some of these issues that always happen, regardless of what tool you use. So. As you guys are doing this, I'll piggyback off of this to mention two other important things about how I've been using Top Hat in the class, is that I'm using it purely as a sort of formative response. So I'm asking students to tell me what they know, and then I'm using that in a way to change basically the, what I'm teaching, what I'm explaining. So I just give students credit for responding, not for being right or wrong. And it takes a little bit more doing. You have to go, like when you create a question, you have to go under advanced settings to do that. Um, the other thing is that click on target feature that I really like doesn't work on like your cell phone yet. Um, it works on your smartphone. If you basically do it through a web browser, but if one of the things that you can do, and I'll show you guys this, um, is let's take maybe not such a long question. Um, uh, there, perfect. So let's say that you have students come into class and all they've got is a not so smartphone they can just use text messaging to respond to most of these. They can send back even open-ended questions, they can send text messages, and they just use this phone number and then they put the particular question code, so like in this case 7621, and the answer that they would put in. So they can do via text messages. They can't just with text messages do the um, click on target question. But I mentioned this as a limitation to them, and they're talking about basically trying to create sort of a battleship system. So, you know, F7 would be your click on target coordinates. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if I can allow students to put in multiple coordinates and then create <laughs> entire maps of regions. But um, in the same way that I talked about how they're responsive, when I said, hey, look, this is a limitation, they said, well, we'll work on this battleship system. And I haven't seen it yet, but they tell me that they're working on it. But that is one place where I don't even give credits then for the click on target questions. So those students who only have a smartphone aren't penalized for not participating in that question. I just don't, uh, it's zero points out of zero points. Um, most of the questions are one point for answering them. And then at the end of the semester, you can go back um, and actually tally things up. So we created this folder, this on your own folder, and in that folder we put a bunch of different questions that show that demonstrate different question types that the system will create. So I would recommend going through all those questions, trying to figure out how to answer them, um, because just because they do show you the variety of, of types of questions that you can do in Top Hat. And obviously we just did one of each, you know, question type. So these could be used in a lot of different ways. This one actually threw me off when I first tried to figure out yeah. how to do it because I was trying to drag. Well, yeah. Oh, I clicked. But what you have to do actually is just click on one and then click on the other. 
So click on something from the left column and then click on the one on the right column. Yeah. yeah. This is kind of nice when you text an answer. The first time you do it, you get a response that says, you just sent your first submission to Top Hat. Kind of a little confirmation. Yeah. Like, hey, we got and it. And congratulations, and you're <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it does have that quick feedback, you submitted. So. You know, like, it worked. You're... Yeah. And that feedback, it's, it's sort of a neat thing, because the shorter the feedback, we've all had students who are like, when is my test going to get graded? And they're like, and you're like, you, I've got to do 200 of them. Two weeks, maybe. Um, with this type of a thing, it's right there. It's on their mind. They, they submit something. They can see the feedback of that it was submitted. And then we immediately talk about it. And we can start going to some of the, these reports right now and see how, see what happens. Do you ever do any live reporting, Ed? Yeah, yeah. So I can actually show you. Um, Oftentimes, and we'll do that. I mean, we'll do that as a group. Uh, as a group, some of those as a group questions. So the favorite Avengers ones, we'll, we'll yeah, that one, and we'll do that. Yeah. So this is this will show, and it does update. Um, now, when you have lots of answers, like for example, I've left it open like this for some of the open-ended ones, and it sorts alphabetically. And so as students start to respond, this constantly updates. Whereas here with the bar graphs, it's really nice because then it's actually relatively fixed order and people can start to see how, um, how those answers are going in. Yeah, can we look at the which SRS, the feedback yeah. on the which SRS question? Yeah, yeah. I think that one might be easy to... Yep, so let's go. Here we go. So these are the re results from um, the student response systems. So if you haven't answered this question yet, if you answer it, we should, we should know immediately what you responded because it should, it should pop there now. And have you used any of the other modules, like a discussion, um, have you uploaded files or presentations? I, I haven't used the discussion. I have, um, one of the things that I do is the questions I put in a review mode after class. <laughs> Um, and so I've left those, you know, because again, these are basically participation type points. So I put those in a review mode after class. Um, and so one thing that I tried and have basically tried a little bit is the, basically the sort of app that's supposed to help integrate with like your PowerPoint. I tried it, I decided it was easier just to click out of PowerPoint, go, in, go, go into Top Hat and go back. I didn't spend very much time on it. Um, and John has had a similar experience. So that might be a place where, um, again, giving feedback to Top Hat saying, hey, look, you know, I tried it. Other people have tried it. And they find it to be more cumbersome than necessary. How many of you have opened up or played with Top Hat before today? Anyone? Just a, a couple, couple yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Or what have you noticed, George? <laughs> uh, so I, I, at the School of Nursing, we use this as our <coughs> Student response system, so we have that, or we're using it with our 304 undergrads, and in many of our courses, faculty um, go as high as 20% of the course grade mm. assigned to talk to questions. Uh, we do have a, a half an hour screencast on how to use it. I'll be happy to share the URL if you want yeah. to guide you through the process of creating yeah. the course and then it goes through all the types of questions. We had a couple of, uh, we've used it for two years now. Um, we had a couple of observations. Number one, our students are required to have uh, laptops for class, and we do ask them to use laptops only. I know that it allows you to use mobile devices and traditional uh, non-smartphones, uh, but the more you allow, the more support issues you will have, mm -hmm. especially in a class of 150, right. which means you're running around the room trying to make sure why somebody's question didn't get submitted. And then we find out that technically they're using Microsoft Surface, which we do not support. And some of the things do not go through. Uh, for example, using uh, web access on iOS devices very often misses mm. the questions. If you have more than 100 people submitting, some of them don't register. So we ask students to use um, actual web access on their computers, not the mobile stuff. Uh, so that's one. Um, number two, uh, we, we do find that um, we actually did a little bit of research and we found that there's by now a substantial amount of research on it that recommends that if you want to see um, measurable improvement in student attendance or student outcomes, it has to count as at least 10% of course grade. Mm -hmm. If you go below, 
then supposedly all you will get is complaints about having to pay for it, <laughs> not being used enough. So uh, we looked at a couple of there are actually a couple of research papers that went back and said that uh, you start seeing attendance um, and reduction in attrition if you assign to it 10% of the course grade or more. George, will you, pay, will you send out a link yeah. to or just or, so whatever the put it on our D2L curve. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's cool. Page, which, which guides students and faculty through setting up an account, and then um, it has a half an hour screencast on how to set up your questions in your course. Oh, excellent. And by the way, for those of you who have not been here before, um, we have a D2L course associated with this, and that is where we store a lot of this information. And by signing in or RSVPing um, to these sessions, we automatically enter you onto that D2L course. Uh, we're going to be able to then access these um, these resources. So if you RSVP before yesterday at noon, you're already in the D2L course. And if you RSVP after that or came today, I'll put you in this afternoon. But you'll have access to all these resources. They're also the resources are also available on the Teaching Academy website, um, which is also linked through the D2L course. Do we want to do the group question? Yeah, let's do the group yeah. question together and let's, let's watch the responses roll in because we thought that'd be kind of a fun activity. How many of you have ever played Wii or had a Wii? <coughs> have you ever done the Wii vote thing where you vote on some issue and you see the big pie chart of where everybody else in the world who voted on that question goes? This is what I like to think that is. <laughs> oh, here we go. So, did so, you see the question pop up? So, Ed just activated that question. So you should just see another question pop up that asks you to put the Avengers. All right, let's put it under the open, open up reports and do live reporting. Ed. All right. Oh, hang on. I've got oh, the hit, question. You guys, I had to hit refresh. You popped up. So far, I have zero responses. <laughs> This is a really a complex hierarchy. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm just trying to figure right. out how to, how to oh. Hang on. break them. Do you just drag them down? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just drag them down. Yep. Huh. Iron Man? A bunch of people love Iron Man? <laughs> 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 He's smart. He's smart. It's a oh. superpower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, ladies. Black Widow. <laughs> Pretty even, though. I guess it's a whole order. If. We we can actually, so when people are done, we can change this question to be just who is your favorite yeah. instead of rating. Yeah. And then we can see how that stacks up. Yeah, superhero loss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, so I've actually had students, yeah, um, I've actually watched this where students will put in the wrong answer. Well, they'll basically put in the wrong answer and then I give them some feedback and I will see that the number of wrong answers decreases. So <laughs> students are clearly, and, and even though I'm not giving them points for correctness, they will resubmit their answer. And this is a strategy that a lot of instructors use. Mm. They'll have the question twice, right? So first you'll have the question, you'll see how everybody do it, look how, what, what other people do. So I submit, or Alex submits something, and he's like, huh, I hit B, but everyone else is choosing C. Maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. And then we can go back later on, and we can say, okay, now talk to your neighbor, and what do you decide as, as the, between the two of you? And then they'll come back in, and they'll have a different set of answers. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a great, great for parent share. So I, I will say, I think, um, and I'll, I'll deactivate the question in a second to do this. But if you go in under edit item right here, so um, I just selected this question and then went down here to edit item, and I'll deactivate the question to do this. Um, if you scroll down to advanced settings, there might be 
a way to, for example, here under timers, you can have a time limit. Um, I don't know if, so there might be a way that I haven't played with to only permit one submission. Um, there is also a sort of like quiz bowl function that I have not played with. Um, so if you wanted to do something like that. So the quiz bowl thing would be which student gets the answer the first? It's kind of a Jeopardy, hit the, hit the button timer. First. In the, um, and in the heat map question, yeah. and I had a heat map question there that was about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of these types of shows. Um, but you can, in that question, you can specify how many times they can click, but it didn't, I don't remember if it said how many times they can submit, right? So okay. Like, um, if you, I think it's probably under edit. So if I go so this here. Supposed, this is the heat map one, so yeah. click on which, of, which, yeah. So. Um, there we go. Nobody picked racks. Come on. Um, <laughs> but the, when you're doing the settings for that question, you can allow them to click more than one time within a submission. Which I'm not really sure what that does for you. If you can, you can click once or more than once. But if you go down to the bottom, yeah, maximum clicks by student. Yeah. But that doesn't say anything about maximum submission. Yeah, number of submissions. I think this is, I think they're, they're calling clicks by student equivalent, but it doesn't seem to have the same thing for some of the other ones. Okay. Um, can you go back to that spot just for a second though? And yeah. So we can see the red dot thing? Yeah. Because in the heat map question, I mean, oh, I, where it's, is it it's now? an opinion question, but I set it up with the right answer. So you can <laughs> designate which, um, what region of the screen if they oh, of course I, is going to generate a correct answer response. So, oh, I need to go back and, go yeah, and deactivate it. So, so there's that red dot around the rocket, because that was my response then. Um, and you can make that as big as you want. Um, so if you want to make it bigger, you can, give, oh, yeah. I deleted it. But you can mark the region on the screen that will that will let tell the student that will give them a correct response to it, or you can have no correct response if you just want it to be an opinion question. So there, so so I could, for example, <laughs> put it such that if they clicked on any of the four, it would be counted as correct. <laughs> so can you go back and change your answer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless the timer. Unless the timer is on, right? Yeah. If I set a timer, then you might have, say, only 60 seconds or five minutes to go in and change answers. So um, I typically, like I said, because I'm using this more as a formative tool, um, I'm, I'm not trying to make them respond within a certain window and say, gotcha, you got it wrong. Um, but if you really wanted to use it more as an assessment tool, as a more summative assessment type tool, um, then you might want to put a timer on it in those <coughs> sorts of ways. Sure. sure. Then they have about 10 minutes to talk together and resubmit. <coughs> After creating two separate questions, what it does is it records the most recent answer. So if a student resubmits a new answer for the same question, it will delete the previous answer. So what we have to do is work around it. And uh, yeah. Question 1A, which is the first submission, deactivate it, and then activate 1B, mm -hmm. which is the second submission, and then they count as two separate things. Otherwise, yeah. it, we found out it just overwrites. Yeah. So it would keep all the submissions. So yeah. we would have submission 1 was A, submission 2 was B, but it just deletes everything before. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we have 16 minutes left. Do you guys want to go in as instructors and see what it's like to build these things? It's, I will yeah. tell you that it's very easy, um, at least to get started. Um, or should we just talk about the pedagogy and talk more about what types of questions to ask? Oh, we should have had that as a question that we could vote. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use the attendance mode? I don't use the attendance mode. I, I sort of think of it more like the questions themselves give me the, the participation in class. And you have, for example, a student who's there for class 
for most of the class, but misses, especially my class is an 8 a.m. class. Um, so they might miss the first question, and if I took attendance on the first question, <laughs> You know, I, I had a rower, for example, in my class who was always running into class um, late from practice because she was out on the lake, uh, you know, first thing in the morning and then would come in. <laughs> and so um, I, didn't, I didn't do the, the attendance function, just used the questions as my proxy for that.